Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I've been around and I just wanted to come back and get back in touch with you guys because I have just been so busy with work lately and when I get off of work, I've been spending time with my family. You know, my son's been doing good in karate. He's been doing karate tournaments and we had to travel to Orlando and to Valdosta to go see him compete and it's been really something watching him bloom into the young man he's becoming. So it's had me a little bit distracted from posting videos like I usually do but I wanted to come back and talk to you guys because, you know, a lot of you guys have been talking to me about using the air fryer. And I know a lot of you really appreciate what the air fryer has done for you, just like it's what it's done for me. It made it so much easier to do a diet that I wasn't used to cooking anything anyway. But now I'm able to throw a steak in, get one done in a matter of minutes, and have cleanup all done before I'm even done eating. So the air fryer has been truly wonderful. But... I know a lot of you talk a lot about cooking with charcoal, and I've never been a fan of the grill. As much as I would like to be a fan of the grill, it was just one of those things where it seemed like it's a lot of mess and a lot of hassle. And I've also been disappointed when I buy new products, because like for instance, when I bought that cowboy grill over there, I got it off of Amazon after getting a deal for signing up for American Express and basically getting a free cowboy grill out of it. But you know, I've used it one time and now it's sitting in my yard rusting. So it's really not been that good of an investment. And it's one of those things where I look back and say, gosh, I wish I hadn't have bought that. But with the air fryer, I've never had such a complaint. But I do like the idea of trying things differently and being able to get out of the mold that I've been in. And recently a company reached out to me that wanted me to try out their product. And that company was London Sunshine. And here they have sent me one of their little Cadet 13-inch grills to give it a try. And you know, I haven't even opened the box yet. And so far I'm impressed with this thing because it's heavy. So I'm looking forward to opening it up. And maybe if I like it, it's something that you'll be interested in too. But this way you get a chance to see what it's like to try it out just like you would. Not being familiar with it, not being used to cooking that way. And maybe it's something you'll like just as much as we've grown to like the air fryer. Let's check it out. First, let's take it out of the box. This weather has been so weird lately. I got up this morning, I was wearing this jacket, and it's already getting too hot out here. It was 40 degrees when I woke up this morning. I know if it's 40 degrees down here in Florida in the middle of March, it's got to be insane in the northern regions right now. All right, let's see here. Tabletop Kamado Barbecue. It's outdoors use only. Do not use under any awnings, parasols, or gazebos. So I chose to be outside for not just the lighting reasons, but also because that would be a good idea. I had a feeling. So I mean, so far, just from reading the warning instructions, you know, there's a lot of things you gotta be careful of. You don't have to be careful of with an air fryer. And a lot of limitations are placed on it that you don't have with an air fryer. Hence, one of the reasons I've always loved an air fryer. This is interesting. The Kamado is self-cleaning. Heat it up to 260 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and it will scorch off all the food and debris. Then it talks about maintenance, lighting, usage, and care information. Ensure the Kamado is positioned on a permanent, flat, level, heat-resistant, non-flammable surface away from flammable items. Well, all the concrete bases I have out here are underneath awnings. And the ground is not flat and level. So, once again, kudos to the air fryer. Didn't have to worry too much about that. Heck, I use my air fryer on top of a plastic table. So it does have some guides on cooking temperatures for slow cooking, things like beef brisket, pulled pork, whole chicken, ribs, and roasts. It has information on grilling and roasting fish, pork tenderloin, chicken pieces, whole chicken, leg of lamb, turkey, and ham. And then it has uh, suggested for searing meats like steak, pork chops, burgers, and sausages. And that is 260 degrees Celsius to 370 degrees Celsius steak for five to eight minutes. So that sounds like a reasonable amount of time for cooking time. It's just all the other stuff I got to do to get there. All right, so now we got all the parts and pieces here. Let's see if we can get it put together.
All right, so that's that. That's it. That's all there is to it. Nothing else in the manual. So all we got to do now is cook and follow the instructions, right? Man, this thing is heavy. Definitely heavy duty made though. I like how solid it is. So you know my first thing when I look at this about the curing of the Kamado is that it talks about using lighter cubes or solid fire lighters. I don't even know what in the world they're talking about. So I had to go look that up online and I found out that apparently they make some little cubes and Weber makes some of the best rated ones for doing this. So next Wednesday I'll have what we need to get started trying this out if I follow the instructions. But I do know how to get charcoal started without solid fire lighters. So I figured I'd order some of those anyway. That way I can show you the proper way to do it later on. But I'm going to use some of the wood kindling I have from this cut oak back here. Alright, well I've got some, I got some paper here. And i got some kindling I can use, probably more than I need. Let's trim some of this down. So this is just the curing process. This is the first time getting to use the grill, letting it do some cooking on its own uh, to get the heat going and to test the, the bands on the outside here. It talked about how you want to make sure that everything's nice and tight after it's done some cooking because you might have some expansion of the bands after the first time use. And you can see here it's at 150 degrees. But I found it very interesting that it had all these different settings for smoking and baking and grilling and searing. The temperatures aren't quite what I thought they would be. So I don't know how accurate that is in telling us exactly what we need it to be on. But you know, I could see using this if I was going to, uh, say, one of the local springs around here and we wanted to do a little cookout while we were swimming and having a good time together and we wanted to be able to eat some food as a picnic type of situation, this little cadet grill would be great for that. It's a bit heavy. It would take me and my son walking together to carry it because I wouldn't want to be lugging this thing around out there for uh, a mile walk to where I'm going to wind up going. This just would not be a good everyday option for me. My life is too busy and too hectic to be taking the time to bust out the charcoal and to go find the paper and the lighter fluid and have the cubes and everything else involved when I can just throw it on the grill, turn on the knob, and be ready to go. For the most part, air frying is still going to be my way of cooking. But I'm looking forward to tasting a steak coming off this once I get this curing process done. And then we'll start it over again with some charcoal. But you know, if you're really into having your steaks cooked over charcoal, this would be a good little option. Especially if you didn't have a whole lot of space to cook on. Here we are 24 hours later. Heck, it's a hundred degrees, a little over a hundred degrees in there right now, just sitting outside. <laughs> but you can see all the fuel has burned up, the charcoal is gone. All right, now that I've gotten through the curing process here, let's give it another go. I don't have the fire cubes in yet, but I have some paper I can roll up and we're going to cook a steak on some charcoal. Something I haven't done one time in the past two years and two months of this way of eating. So if I can do it, you'll be able to do it for sure. Alright, there we go. We got a nice even coverage. You know, I should be ashamed to say it that I'm not good at doing this kind of thing. But it's just one of the reasons why I never got into it, because it wasn't something that I, I found that was easy. Every time I ever tried to start a fire, I had a hard time with it. So this is already going good. I came over here and I checked the grill to see what it was on, and it's on just under 400 degrees. Now I think I need a little bit more coal in here to get the temperature up to where I want it to be for a good searing. 
So I'm going to add a few more. And this is where my greenness comes in. I, I really am not used to doing this, so hopefully this is going to help. So it's been an hour, you know, and that's one of the problems I have with grilling, especially on charcoal, is if you want to get the right temperature for the steak, then you're really kind of hit or miss. But it also probably comes with a little more experience. And that's where I am not <laughs> the guy to talk to about this. But, you know, like I say, I'm trying out this product for the first time, so I'm hoping this is going to make a difference. We'll see how it does after a little while. Good thing I'm not hungry. So what I'm going to do now is get this salted up and get it ready to go so when we cook it on the grill, we can get a good look at how this steak's going to come out. Nice top sirloin, $5.99 a pound. Can't beat that for beef these days. But my favorite special is coming up soon, the Easter special, where you get your rib roasts on sale. They won't be $5.99 a pound this year. At least I don't think they will. Not with inflation the way it's been. But it should give us a chance to get some good ribeyes for a lot cheaper than we've been seeing lately. You know, the ribeyes at Publix today were $19.29 a pound. I said, good night. I would never spend that much for a pound of meat. I guess unless I absolutely had to. And I can't imagine a reason where I would absolutely have to because there's other cuts if I have to get them that I could live on. You know, when things are just more expensive than you can afford, you got to take what you can get. I'm not going to use the Redmond uh, smoke salt today because I'm cooking on charcoal. I want to see how the flavor comes out just using charcoal and regular old dry brine. And as soon as those charcoals are ready, we'll go take a look at that. All right, after 30 minutes, we're still just over four, we're right at 400 degrees actually. And the charcoals look a little bit gray in some areas, black in others. I don't feel like they're going to get any higher than this. I'm not sure what to do different. The instructions talk about opening, opening the lid fully. I know the lid actually opens. There we go. Now that, that might be considered fully open. It also says not to stoke the coals any. So I haven't to stoke the coals at all. I've just been trying to follow the instructions to get it up to the higher temperature it's supposed to be at. 500 degrees is about the minimum that I would want it at for cooking a steak on a grill. And this is one of the problems I have with grilling is that I don't know what to do next. Maybe adding some more fuel will help. I'm going to put some more coals in here and see if that helps any. It may just take a little more experience than I have. I really want this to work. So I'm going to keep giving it a try. I'm going to go ahead and open the top all the way and see if that helps any. Because that's what it says to do to get the, the temperature up to the searing heat. It also says to make sure that the vents are open on the bottom. You know, the other reason I want this to work so much is having a grill like this, a charcoal grill or a wood grill, is a great way to be able to cook if you don't have power. And there's going to be times in our lives when we might need to cook something. And something like this would be nice. I need a little more experience using it. I know a lot of you are going to be watching this and just laughing at how ridiculous I look trying to cook out here. But I'm making this for people who want to do this diet and also want to have different ways to cook their meat. But they're like me. They're green at stuff like this. They're used to ordering out. They're used to having their wife cook for them. Or they're used to having something that's prepackaged and made that they just stick in the microwave. And I'm hoping my experience is going to help them. I hope we're going to come out good on the, end of, on the other side of this. But right now, my confidence is real low. We'll see. Well, here I am 30 minutes later, and this thing's a lot hotter than I thought it was going to get. It's at 670 degrees right now. So letting that airflow sure made a big difference. So I think I finally found the right amount of coal to put in. It even turned the grill rainbow colored here. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get that steak. See if this big steak will even fit in here. Yep, it fits. Two pounds of sirloin there, baby. Alright, let's close this down. Now it says six to eight minutes. 
We'll give this a flip in about four minutes. Well, I was so distracted trying to get this right my first time, I didn't even record flipping it over. I had to get longer tongs because I burned my hand using those little tongs. Let's take a look and see what the temperature looks like inside that steak. It's been seven plus minutes now, and it says five to eight minutes at searing temperature. Granted, the temperature has dropped some. It's 120 degrees inside. We'll let it cook just a little bit longer. All right. We got 130 in the center, 140 off to the side, so I think we're doing good. Let's go ahead and give this steak a look. And then I'm going to close the grill, close the air holes, and that is supposed to allow you to let these char these coals cool down to where you could use them again if you want to. We'll check on that later. Let's check on this steak after we let it sit for a few minutes. As usual, I'm dealing with weird lighting circumstances. I'm underneath an awning with the sun shining in this way, so I got to deal with that on my face, but hopefully you'll get a good look at this steak. Let's take a look. It's been about five minutes now. Nice and pink and juicy on the inside. Nice sear on the outside. Let's see how it tastes. Yeah, it definitely tastes like cooking on charcoal. The meat came out a perfect texture. It's tender and juicy. No complaints there. I'm going to see if I can't spruce up the flavor a little bit with some of my Redmond salt. I don't particularly care for the charcoal flavor. Let's see here. That's a lot better. Mm. Mm. These smoke salts are a lifesaver. Mm. Yeah, together with Redmond smoke salt, the texture of the steak is perfect. It takes away some of that charcoal flavor. Mm. Wonderful. So my confidence was low going into using this grill. It wasn't getting a whole lot higher as we were moving along, but in the end, the Kamado Grill by London Sunshine really came through. It did a good job on a large piece of steak, outdoors, on the ground, with charcoal, no electricity, nothing fancy to use. Do got to have a few grilling tools, like a good pair of tongs, maybe a, a spatula like I use to pick up the grill with, or something like that. But, like I say, for a novice like me to be able to get a good steak like this the very first try, I'm pretty impressed. It's definitely good for a change of pace if you're used to doing the air fryer like I am all the time. This really is a different bit of flavor. The steak is a great texture. I love the sear on the outside. It's just going to be a matter of getting used to the grill and knowing how to use a grill at all. That's going to make all the difference. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? KetoCon 2023. It's going to be in Austin, Texas. And... Yours truly is going to be there on the Saturday event. If I get enough people that get tickets using my code, that they will set something up for a little meet and greet type of situation for me. Check in the description for the, the link and the code. Not only will it help the opportunity for me to be able to talk to more of you, but you'll also save $50 on your own tickets. And look for Saturday to be the day to have a chance to get together with me.